This is Kevin Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. It's the morning after, baby. The morning after the day before. What time did you rock in? I guess I went to bed. I probably didn't go to bed till about eight. Like I had a little nap and then just couldn't sleep. Um, just buzzing, mate. Buzzing. We've got um, media, British media at 5.30 today. And then we leave here at 10. Get on the plane. One o'clock flight. Land at five o'clock at Heathrow. Tomorrow morning. And back to work, mate. We've got Spain next week. Barcelona on Thursday. Doesn't stop. So we get back on Monday, five o'clock in the morning. Go straight to the office, do a few bits, then go home, see everybody. And then Tuesday morning, leave the house at quarter to five in the morning, back to Heathrow for the Barcelona press conference. Come on. Come on. Yeah, so we just got a, just a big effort now till the end of the year. We've got Barcelona next week, York Hall on the 19th, and then Phoenix on the 20th of December. And we're done, we can have a few weeks off. Um, how much of a... You've got a lot of stick after during the first. Sorry, Joshua. Um, how much of last night was kind of a little bit of a weight lifted off your shoulders, a bit of relief? A bit, how much did that come into it? Look, he don't, he's, he's gone from like being adored to being, I guess, a little bit... Um, like heavily criticised, stick, people doubting him. With me, I've just always been, like I've always had the stick, do you know what I mean? So it doesn't really... But that went into overdrive that yeah, night. Yeah, but the stick I got from June 3rd, I was, I've always, it's always about, it's about him, right? And that's why you saw me getting mad last night and people saying to me, oh, questions before the fight. Like, if, if he wins, like, or if he loses for matrim, is that a disaster? No, no, I just want him to win. We've got a great business. And, but Josh is like, he's a mate, and I wanted him to win so badly. The flip side of what he does in the industry, of course, that's brilliant, but I just wanted him to win so badly. And after June the 1st, I, um, I sort of, I think when you get up every day and go a million miles an hour every day, you don't really realise, I think, your, like your, I'm, I'm a bit tired today, so I might struggle on this, but like, your qualm, do you know what I mean? Your qualm. And what I mean by that is, your mojo, like your qualm, not qualm. Hello, Tony. My ambassador of qualm. Recovered from last night? I'll never look up on the best nights ever. I'm so happy I went back. Back to your interview, Jerry. Keep going. Thanks, mate. Jerry. That's, that's really cool. Jerry, yeah. Um, so what I mean by that is, better word, your spirit, right? So after AJ lost on June the 1st, I stayed in New York and I went straight into Gennady Golovkin fight week. And then I came home and then I went away for a few days with my 40th. And I wasn't really, I don't know, I never, I, I didn't feel great. Like I, was, I was gutted and I was sort of always thinking and plotting. And for those few days, I was always on the phone, sorting out the rematch, trying to make sure we wouldn't get fucked, trying to make sure no one was gonna pull a fast one on us, you know. And that period of time after, I think we had another show after that, I'm waffling a bit, but basically I, I was, I was, I was, I think looking back, I was quite down in the dumps, to be honest. And I'm a positive person. And at the time, I wasn't thinking, oh, no, like moping around, because I was just going a million miles an hour. But I, what, I don't think I was overly happy. I think I was a little bit down in the dumps. And I think seeing him come back, that, that was the relief from everyone last night. And the pressure on him was insurmountable I mean like you can't imagine the pressure on him and he would say no no pressure like you know there no, was like, there's oh, massive huge, pressure on him pressure. his career yeah, was on the yeah, line last night it's not just the careers online you've just been and, and I don't like saying this but let's be honest he was humiliated at Madison Square Garden it was his American 
debut, coming out party, MSG, sold out. He went down four times. Replacement opponent. Yeah, got concussed, like, you know, and Marie's, how he looks and everything. You know, and, and there was times where I was like, I picked Andy Ruiz for that fight with AJ's blessing, with Rob McCracken's blessing, because I knew it was a good fight, right? And I felt that on his US debut, I probably got a little bit more, I probably got a little bit caught up with maybe social media. Like, I believe that any other, no other promoter would have chosen Andy Ruiz. I think that they would have gone for Trevor Bryan or Manuel Chart, or something like that. And they, people were even saying to me, the week of that fight. Why'd you choose Andy Ruiz? Like, he's Who good. Who was saying that to you? Um, People in boxing. I think Don King said it to me um, about, you know, he had Trevor Bryan. Yeah. I think he was saying, why do you want Andy Ruiz? Like, the guy looks like, he don't. he looks terrible yeah. and like he can fight. And I just think sometimes, I think where I probably listen, say too much to the fans, because that sounds disrespectful, but feel as though I'm obligated to give him a good fight and people are going to me Ed it's his US debut no one gives a fuck who he fights just like like they, they still turn up the tickets are sold they're buying it you know and I just I felt like we were getting so much criticism and Josh was getting so much criticism at the time that he needed a credible opponent and I felt like Andy Ruiz was the opponent we still got a load of stick but a lot of people in the industry went do you know what this is a good mm. fight but when he lost I kind of felt like people were saying to me Oh, terrible matchmaking. Like, why'd you choose Andy Ruiz? And I'm thinking, well, we all chose Andy Ruiz because that's how, how it works. But maybe I made a bad decision. Do you regret that now, considering well, what happened last night? The greatest thing that ever happened. Do you think? Uh, it's all worked out. Yeah, mate. I mean, he's got. Look at the story. You know, if he would, I said this to Josh last night. If he would have beaten, it, if he would have boxed someone else, Trevor Bryan, man, well, no disrespect to these guys, right? And he, he say he takes him out in a round or two rounds. Everyone moans. Right? The pressure mounts even more for him to fight. Like, what would well, this fight have been if he had fought one of them and beaten Pulev. one of them? Pulev, yeah. Yeah, which at the time, yeah. coming off whoever we boxed in New York, he would have got ridiculed for. Yeah. You know, the money would have been much smaller, right? So he's ended up becoming a, a hero, an icon, a history maker, you know, making more money and winning his belts back and just being, I mean, it's just like it couldn't have worked out any better. But what I'm saying is, is Ruiz wasn't the wrong opponent at Madison Square Garden. He was a good, he was a really good opponent. Mm. And if AJ was switched on, like he was last night, he would have beat him the same way. Mm. Probably, maybe easier. Because the main challenge last night was coming off the defeat. So if that was June 1, he would have done the same thing. So he was the right opponent, but everything happens for a reason. And obviously it unfolded. So I got I've, I've got a lot of stick from people in the industry going, oh, fucking you chose any, oh, you idiot. Like, you know, and you have to look at the politics of you know, the PBC side and the matchroom side, where if I'm PBC, they've ended up getting a free shot at the World Heavyweight title. I'm winning it against all odds. Now all of a sudden they've got all the belts. four belts <laughs> in one hand and one belt in the other hand. You know, as much as I say, you know, it's not about match with PBC. Of course, like that's my life, that's my business. And there was a big power shift. Now he's gone and gotten back. And they would have been absolutely sick to their stomach last night. Just like I was sick to my stomach on June 1. What did you make of Ruiz's comments about his I camp? And I, I didn't like him because there are so many excuses we could have given you for June 1. Right, and he come up and with he nothing. Never said one. Yeah, and he still won't say him now. Yeah. He said, I'll, "I'll tell you after the fight." Yeah, 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 yeah. But he won't. And there's nothing like panic attack, knocks out his spine, total bollocks. But just and things where he weren't, he weren't even there really on June one. Like mentally, you know, it wasn't about. So what is there for him to reveal about June one? Then he said that he was going to talk um, about. There must have been there, something. There is, there is, there is one thing. Um, kind of like I, I, I'm gonna let him talk about it but it's, it's more it's not like a major major thing where you go oh, shock revelation but just different things in the build-up and maybe like a little bit of health and you know stuff like that like where maybe he might have not have been firing on all cylinders which I don't think at the time it wasn't something that it's only when it was looked into and tweaked and you know oh right maybe we should be doing this instead you know so nothing like sparring, panic attack, all complete bollocks. And when I say health, I'm talking like just general like endurance and like training and stuff like that. 
So, and mindset. Mindset was the main thing. And I think that's what he's talking about. He just, he said to me last night. Was he, went, he even up for that fight? Not really. Not really. You know why? Because he really wanted to. Fight Miller. Yeah, bad. And when it all unfolded, should we have all got together and said, should we cancel this fight? Maybe. But at the time, it's like US debut. like, And we were getting loads of stick at the time anyway for the wilder negotiations and everything. So to pull out of a fight would have just been, you know, so anyway, it's history. So going back to Andy Ruiz's comments about partying and all no, this stuff listen, about... Listen, we know. I mean, but he had three months off. It's not like he shouldn't be allowed to go out and celebrate his win. But you've got to knuckle down as world champion and do your work. So Andy Ruiz's... Um, main problems over the years has been his discipline but I don't like the fact that when we lost AJ said no excuses Andy you're the better man you deserve your night you deserve your victory congratulations not oh well you know mentally weren't up for it and you know his training didn't go right great because of the break and you know it was a short notice opponent and he was hitting me around the back of the head and like it was just congratulations and I feel like Reece should have said I learned some lessons Maybe I should be a little bit more disciplined, but I can't take away that absolute fucking boxing masterclass from the governor, Anthony Joshua. That's what I would have liked him to say. But, um, you well, know, he's Will you look to match up any of your heavyweights with Andy in the future? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'd love to work with Andy. But people were talking about Dylan White and Andy. Yeah, great good fight. fight. Usyk's a great fight. Hergovic is a great fight. Hunter's a great fight. Povetkin's a great fight. So what's, the, what's his kind of commitment with PBC? And oh, he signed to PBC. So right. He's... It's very unlikely that he's going to come and sign with me. I think he's with Tom Brown Promotions as well, so I'm not looking to, you know. Mm. Like we'd love to have him on the zone. I mean, the zone did huge buys last night. Mm. Big sign ups. How so many buys did you do in the UK? Broke the record. Can I have a guess? Go on then. I'm not going to comment, by the way. And I'll mm. try not to do it, give a facial reaction. Okay, and give it away. so let me. Oh, okay, me, record. Hold on. Hold on. Ready? And try, try and keep it real. Go. Ready? Go. 1.2. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> How accurate yeah, or not accurate? You're, 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 you're around the mark. You're around the mark. Really? Around the mark. Could be north. Could be. Could be north. Are you still going to do some more? Are you going to do some more over the next day? Yeah. It's massive, mate. Massive. It's a fucking, just a mon monstrous success. It's like when everybody comes to you at the end and just says, like, from, you know, from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, you said, like, you've changed the face of sport in this country, right? And then Sky come in and say, we broke the record. And then DAZN come in and go, the numbers in America were huge. It's like, tick, 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 tick. And considering that they had a really awkward time of this fight as well in America. Who? DAZN. Awkward in what respect? Well, what time was this fight oh, in right, America? Yeah. No, the, the problem with it was, was that it was up against a college football match. Big, big college football. Yeah. At which Bob Arum said, what does he know? Um, this guy, a promoter from the UK, he's putting a fight on at the same time as a college football match. It's like, Bob, there is a fucking other world out there other than America, you know? This fight's not for America. It's taking place in Saudi Arabia. And if they told us that he was going to go at four o'clock in the morning, we would have done it. So anyway, yeah. When he was asked about um, Usek Kisti from some... Mug in the yeah. crowd. Um, with me, by the way. Yeah. Uh, let's rock and roll. Yeah, no, he's up for it. He's Is he up for it? Listen, how, how many interviews have I given? Right. And I'm going to do it one more time. 24 fights. You've never said this. Right. 15th fight, Dillian White. 16th fight, Charles Martin for the world title. 17th, Molina. 18th, Brazil. 19th, Unify against Klitschko. 20, Carlos Taco. 21, Unify against Joseph Parker. 22, Alexander Povetki. 23, Andy Ruiz. 24, Andy Ruiz. Please tell me one heavyweight in the world who has a resume anywhere near that. After 24 fights or period? No, period. Yeah. It don't exist, mate. I mean, I know I'm on AJ's side, but it does not exist, especially after 24 fights. And you know, last night he was one of four people I saw to that. ever win an immediate rematch for the world heavyweight title. Floyd Patterson, Lennox Lewis, Muhammad Ali, Anton Joshua. It's time we started giving this kid respect, mate. To, to bounce back from that win last night, that shows so much class. 
he's, and he's, I promise you, he's not even at 60% of how good he's going to be. I promise. He's getting better and better. Like, no one thought he could box like that. You see his legs, the way he's out many times he made Andy miss and fall short. It's a fucking masterclass. Ed, next year, surely you're not going to take up whole of 2020 with mandatories. You're going to have to vacate at some point. Isn't Maybe, it? but you know, Pulev and Usyk. I mean, maybe we try and fight three times this week. Pulev, Usyk, and um, uh, Joshua Wilder, uh, Fury Wilder winner. It's not a bad year, is it? It's more than likely you're only going to fight twice next year, though, isn't it? Maybe. So he wants to go to the gym today. Really? Oh, mate, he's, he's in love with the sport again. Yeah, you know, he said to me last night. You know, when I gave Andy my belts in New York, he goes, "I was just, I was just so tired of it all." Do you know what I mean? He goes, and it was almost like, oh, just take him. That was, he said, that's how I was feeling, like at that moment, you know? And how can you go in there with a hunger? It's a fight. It's not a little game of football where you can nick 10 minutes over on the wing and get a breather. You know what I mean? Wait for the oranges at half time. This is a fight. You've got to be hungry. What months do you think he'll fight in next year? April, May. April, May, and then the back end of the year again? Or September, and then, I don't know, I mean... So. But you have no idea where these are going to take place. You can't even say he's going to fight no, in the next year. No, I mean, year. also, like, he just went 12 rounds. He's, he's coming back here an option? Yeah, I've, we'll, we'll 100% be back in Saudi Arabia. I'm going to be doing a lot of fights out here. So, um, but he's got to be assessed. He's got a few niggles and, bit, you know, bits and pieces where at the moment he's pumped. So it's like, if he's got a little niggle in his hand, it don't seem the big deal. But just get that all assessed, nothing major, and then... Do you know when he went up to Ruiz the other day and he went to him, oh, what's the strategy yeah, yeah, to yeah, beat yeah. you? Did you hear what he said to that last night? So I asked him about that last night, and he said, uh, do you think I'm stupid? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, do you think you don't know what I'm doing? Yeah. Like, no, but he learned from he learned from the best at that. You? What? You? No, Vladimir Klitschko. Of course. I mean, that's what he used to do, is he used to almost like it's like almost in a condescending way with the opponents where it makes you feel like you're just you know I remember when they did a head to head Vladimir and AJ so the head to head like this and AJ go and, and Vladimir goes okay to the cameras in three two one and they both went and I just thought like he's just totally controlled you there you know and that's that's what Vladimir was very clever at doing. A bit spooky. Look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. Edward, can we touch on the card, please? Starting with uh, Dylan White. Mm -hmm. uh, probably good not. Fight, his, yeah, good, no. good fight, but probably not Dylan's best performance. No, I mean, look, he was he wasn't overly fit. He was very heavy. He just got the news the night before. It's always, always around his fights. He gets news on fight day that fucks him probably mentally. Just got the news that he was completely. Uh, Cleared, exonerated from uh, UCAD, and uh, well, it was, I thought it was a good fight. Like I, I didn't think the fight would be as good as it was, and he's never in a dull fight. But mm. gassing a bit after the first four or five rounds, just because he wasn't overly fight ready, you know. But good to get the year out of the way, and I'm very proud of Dillian White. You know the way he's conducted himself through this. People told us that we should walk away from him. Oh, you don't want to be associated with him, blah blah blah. And I, and I knew deep down what kind of fella Dillian White is like he's a proper genuine bloke you know he wouldn't cheat uh, he's very loyal and I stuck by him just like he stuck by me when he could have gone elsewhere you know and I'm so so happy now that he can finally get the respect that he deserves and people can turn around and, and you know I know I went on a bit of a rant in my interview yesterday did you? yeah but I'll repeat it again and you know who you are you know who you are, you try to fuck him, you try to fuck his career. And I promise you, you he will be dealing with you. Not as in he's going to turn up at your house and not granny at you. He no, obviously you we don't promote legal, that kind of thing way. here. Absolutely. Um, the WBC thing, I know we keep talking about it, but are you going to contact yeah, Mauricio? Of course, I already have done. You know, <laughs> sure. I, I think um, criticising people in this business... I've learned just really don't really get you anywhere, to be honest. But I've got a big mouth and sometimes I like to speak my mind. <clears throat> I feel like what the WBC did to Dillian was, was terrible, to be honest. And how you can ban someone 
suspend someone and take away their mandatory position. After all these years that we've been campaigning for this mandatory position and make Tyson Fury a mandatory in a fight that was already made, right? Just to comfort the champion so that he fulfills another mandatory so that he doesn't have to fight Dillian White for another year. It's all wrong. And now, like, how can you suspend someone when the testing agency and the commission, the British Boxing Board of Control, have not suspended him? Now, and Vada, who they work with, yeah, didn't also, find exactly. anything wrong with him. And now, not just have they not suspended him, there was never a failed drugs test. So, Maurizio Suleiman, who is a good man, has to now reinstate Dillian White as the mandatory challenger for the winner of Fury against Wilder. He has to. He has no case. And, that, and, that's and not for 2021. But, but I'm not saying this is a please Maurizio. I'm saying this is a must. I'm saying there's going to be a major problem for Dillian White if this doesn't occur. Because what happened to him was not fair. And Maurizio will know that. And Maurizio will act in the right way. I'm sure he will. And I believe... You know, we need the support of the public. Like the public, you know, the public helped put the pressure on to get the original resolution was that that he was going to fight the winner of Wilder Fury, mm. and they'll do it again. And that's what you know. Like I said, Maurizio is a boxing man. He he will know that Dillian White has been completely and utterly, excuse my language, fucked here. But now at least the truth's coming out. So we've got to do what's right, and he has to be installed as a mandatory for the winner of that fight. When would you, I mean, this aside going on, when would you like to see him back out in action again? Uh, probably spring, late spring. March, like April? Yeah, something like that. I mean, look, he's just boxed. He's had a horrible few months, mate. Horrible few months. Mm. You know, and um, no, one really, no one really believed him. No one really believed us. Me. You know, but every step of the way, as we always do in the business of matrim, we do things the right way and we followed every single procedure throughout that process. And you know what? Going back to the Joshua fight on June 1, that came five weeks after that whole period. That was almost even worse for me, to be honest with you. That period, probably like a two month period, that fucked me. That fucked my mojo bad, that period. I really started to think, do I really want to do this anymore to be honest and now I'm fucking absolutely buzzing to be honest with you come on come on two times Edward um, could you just touch on the other bit of the card draw for Hunter and Povetkin yeah close fight I've had Hunter's manager on today like oh it's a robbery I was like I thought when the um, final bell went I seem to say this every close fight I thought it was a draw and I went round to Sky and they had, most of them had it 115, 113 to Hunter. So I think, I feel like more people thought Hunter won than Povetkin won. But yeah. I feel like it was a very close fight. Really good fight. Can we do it again? Yeah, possibly. I mean, it was a really good fight. Mm. You know, tough fight. Both guys need a nice little break and then we'll see what happens. Hergovic is a beast. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Very heavy handed. What, what, what for still, him next still though, learning. is it? I think, he, look, they want to, he's had a great... He's had a great year in the respect that he's boxed in Washington, Mexico and Saudi Arabia. He's a big heavyweight that's developing, trains very hard, good trainer in Pedro Diaz. It's going to be a, a real problem for the division. Mo Majidov. Good, good. And respect to Tom Little as well. He was always in yeah. there having a go, wasn't he? I love Tom Little. And... Uh, you know, he's, he's been he's he's been great to be around this week, Tom Little. He it's has nice been. to see people smiling, oh, just out here thinking. But like, you don't you don't I don't expect people to come to me and say, "Oh, Eddie, thank you so much." But when you see how happy they are to be here and to get this opportunity, that makes you feel great as well. Hope of Christ, Diego Pacheco. Oh, what like, a knockout from Pacheco! Yeah, that, yeah. Like again, going back to the shit side of boxing and all the hassle. The great side is giving young fighters opportunities and seeing people like Hopi and Diego come out here, you know, the smile on their face. It's, it, mate, you know, it's, it's a nice feeling. Pass me my phone. Oh, okay. um, did you watch Eubank? No, I followed it on... Um,
Um, no, he was. I don't really know what happened. He uh, he lost the first round and then Giza threw a punch and dislocated his elbow. Is that right? Yeah. So. All right. What a touch for you, man? He's probably going to get beat in the fight and end up making a nice few quid for doing three minutes of work. Um, did you read Wilder's comments? Oh, here he goes again. What did he say? So this is from the Athletic Box. Mm. Is that what you was on the other day? Yeah. Deontay Wilder, Joshua did what he had to do to get the win. He ran around the ring and was on his bike all day. I'm not coming in after losing to this guy just to dance, grab, jab, hold. How can no one, how can no one say I'm not the best in the world now? What, well, after Joshua just put on an absolutely public exhibition and scored the World Heavyweight Champion? Don't listen. <clears throat> we spent much too much energy and time talking about Deontay Wilder, who, in the grand scheme of things, has just boxed in America at Las Vegas and sold 7,000 fucking tickets. No, and done about 100,000 buyers on pay-per-view. No one gives a monkeys about Deontay Wilder. I'm sorry, it's true. Um, got to give a mention out to uh, Joshua and Rob McCracken because... Yeah, spe I mean, especially Rob McCracken because Rob took so much stick. You know, yeah. Rob had so much pressure on him in this fight. Um, and... Like, he so couldn't get a guy that, that hates the limelight less, you know? And you live in a world where some trainers want to be celebrities. I mean, some promoters want to be set celebrities. I fucking hate them. Um, yeah, they grade oh, on me. Oh, mate, them. some promoters. I mean, they've got... You look at some promoters nowadays, they've got, like, their own Instagram accounts of them just saying silly quotes and stuff like that. It's ridiculous. Their egos are getting out of control. Um, Taking private jets. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Rob. So he basically is a great, great man, great trainer. And I think AJ deserves a lot of credit for the way he stuck with him. Because it was 100% the right thing to do. Stick Rob. Rob took him from a novice to European, to world amateur final, to Olympic gold, to world heavyweight champion, to unified. You've just got to switch things up a little bit and freshen them up. And that's what they've done. Great work by Joby and Angel, a couple of guys who've come in, been a big part of the camp, and the sparring partners as well. Tim, uh, Elvis, um, Andrew Tabiti, like, you know, Tim. Bryant Jennings. That was an incredible story yeah. how Tim Motton got yeah, into yeah. camp by driving and them mad. He sent me an Instagram message, yeah. Tim, going, I feel, I feel like my style is perfect for Andy Rees. And I watched him on the heavy bag, I was like, fuck, I went straight back, I went, mate, can you fly over? He's been here for 10 weeks. He quit two jobs. I don't know. I want to give him a chance. What's the fight? It's Jared Washington there. Um, Edward. Can we rule out... Can we rule out a third fight? Uh, no. No. I think, I think that Josh is going to fight. I said in an interview, they went, if Joshua loses, do you think this is his last fight? I went, he's going to box on Saturday, he's going to box in 2020, 2021, 2022. So if Andy Ruiz, obviously he's got things to take care of now, mainly with his mandatories, but if Andy Ruiz keeps winning, I don't see why we can't do a third fight. And you know what? And I'm going to post this actually on Instagram shortly. I want to say thank you to Andy Ruiz and his team. Andy Ruiz is a very nice man, and I'm really pleased. He's made a lot of money in six months, a lot of money and it's going to change his life forever. And he will never, he would never have to work another day again if he didn't want And he's managed to pay off his mum's mortgages, buy her a house, his kids are secured for life. I'm very happy that he got the opportunity. And you know what, if we were going to lose on June the 1st, I'm glad we lost to him. That's very um, noble of you to say. Can I go now? Yeah, I feel like there's something I haven't asked you. Next week mm. is uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Thursday. Week uh, after you've got your next gen, uh, next gen Thursday, which you won't be at. Actually. No, because I'll be in Phoenix, Phoenix for Jacob Charles. Why haven't you announced um, Miami? Uh, we're about to. It's imminent. Can I just put something out there? I heard a rumour that the proposed main event might not be on there anymore. Uh, possibly that wasn't the proposed I know what you're saying but 
wasn't actually the proposed main event, but it's a different main event, and it looks like Jake Paul against Anderson Gibb might be on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, Yous. Yeah. Really? That's interesting. Uh, just a quick summary of Saudi then, Ed. All been good? Do you know what? I've had a bloody great time. And we came criticism etc and like I'm not a politician every country has its problems and maybe this country has more problems than most but I can only tell you about the way we've been treated and the way that the people and forget like people say oh yeah well you you know princes and blah 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 no I'm talking about by the, the people you know by people that came to the event people that work here people on the streets, people in the malls, you know? I, I hope you've enjoyed yourself as well. Nice time. I like, like it, yeah. You'd struggle to say something bad about your experience, wouldn't you? There's nothing I, I don't, I don't believe that it. anybody that's come here would could say something bad about Saudi Arabia. No. We'll be back. Big we'll news back. dropping soon, baby. Some stars there last night. Khabib was there. Yeah, big news dropping soon. What you got? Big news. About what? Well, I'll turn the camera off. Click. No, no, no. <laughs> no, just, you know. More, more projects. 2020. Yeah. Oh. Eddie Hearn, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Safe travels back. Come. And uh, yeah. Cheers, mate.